Welcome to my studio. My name is Chris. Would you like to be able to paint this bright and colorful scene of a tree on a hill? If so, keep watching. In this step-by-step -step tutorial, I'm going to show you how I painted this scene in watercolor. Okay, in this painting, I'm going to attempt to do a loose, a more impressionistic style of this fairly simple composition, A Tree on a Hill. I'm going to start with a, uh, I want to do an initial wash over the entire piece of paper. And so I have a big mop brush here that I am using now to apply a nice, generous application of water from top to bottom. And I'm going to put a fair bit of water on here because the more water I have, the looser and just uh, more free flowing the pigment will be as I apply it to the paper. I'm going to attempt to do this painting as well. I don't know if I'll accomplish it or not. I'm, I'm attempting to use a really limited palette, maybe three, maybe four colors. Use an ultramarine blue and I'm going to use a green gold, gold green, green gold, green gold, and um, and I think uh, quinacridone burnt orange. Okay, so I have a nice, nice amount of water on here. If you look at this, it's really, really uh, very wet. You can see the water shimmering off of it. I'm going to come over and grab my Initial bit of this ultramarine blue. And I'm not worried about avoiding the tree area or anything like that. I'm just, uh, sky is typically darker at the top. So, um, I'm going to put uh, more pigment there at the top and lessen that as I make my way down. Kind of looking at how the pigment is flowing on the paper, etc. I'm going to actually pick up a little of the water here. It's still pretty wet. I'm going to come in now with my green gold and uh, put that in there. That's going to really flow into the blue area up above at this point. Okay. Because it's so wet. Now that sky is not just is not just a solid blue. It has, especially as you get closer to the horizon line, it has kind of little gray spots in it. Now I again I'm trying to do this with just a limited palette. So I'm taking my quinacridone burnt orange. It's an orange, so the or it has it's orange, so it has a bit of, um, it's kind of like a burnt sienna, but it has essentially both red and yellow in it. So when I add it to this blue, it's going to make a gray, as we can see there on the palette. And so I'm just going to Applying that there to give a little bit more of a gray sense to the sky as it moves towards the horizon line. Okay, I like that. Now I'm going to move from that really large brush, that was a mop, uh, I think a 5 8 inch uh, mop. I'm going to come now and take a look at my tree. I want to start to put in some of the color 
that's going to represent the tree. But again, this paper is really wet at this point. So anything I do is really going to flow, which is going to be beautiful, actually. This is a number 12 round brush. I'm looking at my reference picture and I'm seeing where the very light, lightest, yellowest green, lightest green areas of the tree are. The, the light is coming from the upper right in this particular reference picture for the most part. Um, the colors are brightest in that direction. And it's darker down in here and in other places. So I'm trying to capture that. Going to now take my, again, trying to use just three colors. So I'm picking up more of my ultramarine. But when I mix that into this green gold here, it's going to create a nice dark green, which now I'm going to come in Again, those areas that I see in the picture are darker, are going to get this application of a nice mix of blue and green gold. Water's paper is still very wet. I really think I could take a bit of this at this point. Nice dark mix of that. Battering a bit. I'm just looking at how the, of course, the paper as we go along here is continually uh, getting drier. And, um, and that will change just every moment that goes by. The, the chemistry, so to speak, between the paper and the pigment and the water is changing as. as the paper dries. Even a little bit darker. Again, I see these areas in here are going to be needing to be the darkest because they're the furthest from the source of light. And I'm just touching, touching We don't try to paint every leaf by any means or anything like that. We're just trying to get a sense for the general shape of the tree. I think I want to get a nice gradual change of color from here, this foreground treatment. I've mixed in a bit more of the green color into the green gold and um, I'm just going to apply that in here. Paper's still pretty wet, so this color that I'm putting in here will diffuse out more than you even can imagine. Uh, as this continues to dry, it'll happen slower and slower, but it will happen, giving a little bit of a sense of the, 
the grasses in the foreground. I initially wasn't using the sap green, but I have just mixed some of that sap green in with my ultramarine blue to get just a different shade of green. Trees are made up of, oh, lots of different shades of green typically. And so I wasn't quite getting all of the tones or um, that I wanted there. So I decided to grab another color. I don't like to have too many colors on my palette at any given time but I thought I needed something there in the tree. I want to keep a lot of those little highlights of the yellow uh, portions. The green gold is really what it is showing through. So I like the... All right. Great, now I uh, want to start looking at that trunk a little bit. And this is where I'm going to, again, I'm trying to stick with a limited palette. I am gonna take my quinacridone burnt orange, which is like a burnt sienna, if you have something like that on your palette. Burnt sienna and burnt sienna and blue and put together, create a really rich uh, neutral color. Um, We see. Just giving a little touches of that in this area that up in here that needs to be dark with, I'm not really trying to paint in the actual limbs yet at this point because it's just still too wet to do that successfully. Instead, what I'm doing is I'm looking at the, for these dark patches uh, in the underneath of this foliage. So in the picture where they see some of that. By using a limited palette, and in this case, making my really dark tone here out of two colors that I was using elsewhere, it creates a, a color unity in the, in the painting instead of, you know, using, oh, you know, eight different colors. Okay, I think that I am going to let this dry so that I can come back and um, start to work on the trunk. Okay, so I'm back at this now. This is fairly dry. It's actually quite dry. And I've mixed up a bit more of the burnt orange and my ultramarine blue, which is giving me a brownish, a very dark brownish color. And I'm gonna go in and I'm just gonna try now and, and just apply, create these trunks. As we can see in the picture, they're a very dark, I'm using a number eight round. Tree trunks start and stop as we look through the foliage. They are covered at times by the foliage. And so they are not a always seen all the way from beginning to end. There's kind of a, okay. Now I put down a mass of color there. I wanna I think I wanna come in with some of this blue kind of okay. 
We're not trying to match or uh, exactly replicate what we see there. We're trying to get a sense for what's going on with the foliage and what's going on with the branches and how they are interconnected. You want to come in now and grab some of this burnt orange and just come in and apply and get more of a gradation of tone in here. So it's not just a solid mass of the same color. And a sense of brown color in there. Now I want to come in and I'm going to take again this dark mixture with uh, the blue and the orange and I want to just add some more shape to some of these areas by painting in around in the dark, emphasizing the dark underside of some of this foliage. Where the edges are too hard, I come in and put water on my brush and soften, soften, soften. I don't want to start mussing around too much with fine details because the minute I do that, I'm going to lose the more the loose and abstract sense that I was going for in this particular painting. So I'm going to stop myself before I get too go far in that direction. All right, as I stand back and look at this a bit, I'm needing more emphasis or value, darker value in the, in the foreground here because if you look at the light, the sky is much lighter than the foreground here. Even though it's a light, bright green, it's still darker in value than, than the, the sky. And so I really need to come back in here. I need to think about how to do this. It's obviously a primarily a green. So this is, this is, pretty, this is pretty dry back here now, uh, down here. And so I... This is essentially a wet on, wet on wet, I'm uh, sorry, wet on dry because it's fairly dry. And um, I don't want just a mass of color. Of, of the same color, so. kind of doing similar to what I did earlier, which was, you know, putting down some wet, a wet mass there of the green gold, um, and then trying to emphasize some of the, the darkness by putting down some of the uh, ultramarine blue. 
and that's that's good I, I just don't I don't want to make it look like I'm trying to see individual blades of grass because that just won't work we get too busy and so I'm I don't know working this in different ways here picked up a little of my An orange. No, I want to be careful with that because that's going to, I don't really want that orange. I just kind of want more of a neutral color in there. Okay, and see now that really darkens that foreground in such a way that it, it really has is, is got a contrast now to the sky behind it, which I needed. I'm going to let that go and then I, I think eventually I'm going to maybe put down some kind of shadow of the tree. Even though it doesn't show up like that real strong in the reference picture, I think it, it would be good to put that there. Now while that's drying down there in the foreground, I want to think about the tree a little bit. I think to get a little bit more of an interest in it in terms of tone and um, color, I'm mixing up some of my burnt orange and even though again this is this is not really true to the reference picture necessarily, I think this could look kind of cool to uh, kind of put a, a wash or a glazing really um, of this color in there a bit. Okay, and I just took my spritz bottle and uh, spritzed that a bit to give it a... Again, that spritz bottle is something I, I like to have with me as, as an option. Sometimes when I need to do something a little different. I'm not real thrilled with these spiky greens up here. Um, just because they seem a little bit too out of character for the rest. I'm gonna, you can come back up later and kind of lift a little bit and I have to be careful. Um, but I can lift some of that, those, that green that was in there and bringing in some of the gold. Just because I didn't really like how it looked in comparison to the rest of the tree. It seemed out of place. I want a consistency of style, really, as you put down these different colors. Yeah, I like that. And again, the reason I wanted to come back and put some of this red, this, this orange, it's really burnt orange, in here is I feel like when you get all three primaries, this burnt orange represents the red, and you get that with the blue and the yellow that's already in there with the green, it, it seems to create a, a real beautiful unity of color. I like that. I got myself a little rigger now. A rigger is a very, very thin brush. 
I've been told it was called a rigger because the old masters would use it to paint the rigging on the ships when they were doing pictures of sea vessels or a rigger. So think of it as being able to draw small, defined, beautiful little lines. And I'm wanting, I'm taking pretty much my ultramarine blue here and touching into this still wet foreground of the green that I had just interested in the shadow. Again, not quite seeing this in the reference image, but feeling like a shadow would be cast there on that green area right below that tree. And so I'm trying to put that in. Oh, I think I want to mix up just a little bit more of my, my neutral, which uh, with my burnt orange, And my ultramarine blue, almost a black. And I think I'm going to come back with my rigor with that color and just emphasize again some of this. I'm going to let this dry for a bit. Okay, uh, this is fairly dry now. And I'm going to come back. I feel like I want to put in a bit more of a shadow. So I've mixed up some of my uh, ultramarine blue uh, in with some of the burnt orange to create a, somewhat of a neutral color. And I'm just going to, I'm using a number 14 round. Always use the largest brush that you can for any particular application. And this can be a fairly big brush because it's a big enough area there. That shadow is falling pretty much straight down. Um, not necessarily casting one way or the other. Uh, I think the light in the scene is pretty much coming from above. I think I'm close to being done here. I think I'm going to um, figure out how I want to sign this. Uh, again, I'm going to use my blue and gold, blue and burnt orange and get a fairly dark color. Put my signature down in the lower right corner. Take a look at it, see if there's anything else I want to do. It's always hard to know when to stop, when to stop. It can be one of the most important things you decide as you're painting, when to stop. Okay, I think that we are done. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it and you found it helpful, please consider subscribing to my channel and also hit that notification bell so you'll be notified the next time I release a video. Thank you so much. Have a great day.